Okay, so today I'm going to continue about uh, our previous day's discussion on inner product space. And uh, as you can recall, uh, yesterday I discussed about a vector space on which standard inner product was defined. Now let me talk about some other inner products which can be defined on separate vector spaces that we are going to discuss in my today's class. Before that, we have a requirement of a definition. First of all, let's try to understand the definition of some uh, terms. And then we are going to, I'm going to show you by an example what that definition actually means. And depending upon that, I'm going to discuss a vector, a vector space, which is uh, known to you. Uh, it, it is a vector space of set of all matrix, vector space of all matrices of order n by n. And on which it, inner product is defined and uh, inner, inner product will be defined. And you know, if you have the book, which particular inner product I'm talking about, but in details, I'm going to discuss on that particular inner product. So the, my first definition of today's class goes with, okay, our topic is inner product space. Let me write the topic name first of all, inner product space continued from the last class. The definition is as follows. Let capital A belongs to the set of all matrices of order M by N defined over some field capital F, okay? We define conjugate transpose conjugate transpose or sometimes it is also known famously as adjoint not but the adjoint just now yeah i just started now okay sir okay this is the first line i am writing let a be any matrix of order m by n taken from the vector space m m cross n f defined over some field capital F and we define conjugate transpose or it is sometimes famously called adjoint, not that typical adjoint we used to know in matrix theory. It is something different. Uh, it is, we define conjugate transpose or adjoint of the matrix capital A to be the matrix of order N by N n by m which we denote by a star okay such that such that a star i j this is you know the uh, abbreviated notation for matrix elements a star i j will be a j i I and column will be interchanged, I and J will be interchanged with complex conjugation on each of the elements. And it will happen for all I comma J. What does this mean? Let's try to understand by an example. Let's consider, let us consider the Pauli spin matrix capital Y, which is given as zero minus I, I zero. If we want to find out the conjugate transpose of this, we will write Y star, and that would be the conjugation, the conjugation of each element And then the matrix transpose will be taken. So it becomes zero because it is a zero is uh, zero's conjugation is zero minus i's conjugation is plus i. So if this this minus i will come to that place because I'm taking the transpose and this is the conjugation of i is minus i that will go there minus i 
and zero's conjugation will be zero. So we will get this matrix, which is similar to Y, which is similar to Y, okay? So that is the, we will say that Y star is the adjoint of the um, matrix Y. Such a matrix where adjoint of the matrix is same as the matrix it's itself, such a matrix is called, uh, has some special name that I'll be talking about later on, not now, uh, because this is not our discussion, our today's discussion, but this happens. Sometimes it may so happen that the adjoint of the matrix is the matrix itself, but there are some other instances where that will not happen. So for example, if I consider any other matrix, say for example, if I uh, take the matrix capital A, which is given by one by four, one minus I by four, one minus I by four and three by four. If I consider this matrix and then it's adjoint will be by this rule, it would be one by four, one plus I by four, this one plus I by four is the conjugation of this element, one minus I by four, because I'm taking the transpose. This is one plus I by four, and this is three by four, okay? But here you see this matrix A star is actually not equal to A. So in case of Y star, it is happening that Y star is equal to Y, but in case of A, it is not happening. A star is not equal to A. But that is how we actually find the adjoint of the matrix. This type of matrix where Y star equal to Y are some typical matrix which will be introduced later on. Okay. They have got some special names. Remember these two examples. This is how we find out the adjoint of the given matrix. And suppose we consider a matrix of the form 1, 0. And another matrix we consider, which is y equal to 0, 1, then we can define the inner product between x and y as follows. We take the, this, this sort of inner product that I'm going to define is in the following manner. It is the adjoint of the y matrix multiplied by the matrix X from the right-hand side. Now, adjoint of the Y matrix will be the row matrix 0, 1, and the X matrix is 1, 0, and the outcome is 0, which is a number. The inner product is a number, you know, it is a scalar quantity. And uh, this, the definition that I have written over here is a typical definition This of inner product is a kind of inner product that can be defined on a particular vector space. You know, in a vector on a vector space, we can define many inner products. This is a kind of inner product that can be defined, which is actually have some uh, physical interpretation in uh, physics, actually. So this is an example of the inner product that can be considered. Now, <clears throat> Let's consider a special inner product, which is not a standard inner product, of course, which will be defined on the set of all matrices of order n by n. So here we are going to consider the vector space V to be the set of all square matrices of order n. Actually, the set of all square matrices of order n is a vector subspace of the set of all matrices of order m by n, you know. So on this subspace, I'm going to define an inner product as follows. We are considering two matrices A and B, which are square matrices. And then I'm writing this term, trace of B star A, for A comma B belongs to V. 
okay so this is the this is the inner product that i'm going to define on the set, set of all matrices of order n where the field is capital f so our objective is to check whether under this inner product v is inner product space or not so we'll try to set it, uh, look for whether this particular inner product satisfies all the properties that have been discussed in my previous class so we, one by one after another we'll try to check the properties first of all number a solution we consider three three matrices of word from this particular set let a b c belonging to v okay then a plus b c the inner product of a plus b with c by definition that would be trace of c star a plus b okay that would be equal to trace of this c star will be multiplied by the matrix capital a and then plus c star will be multiplied by the matrix capital b and if I don't know whether you know this property or not. Trace property of matrices says that. Yes, sir. Trace A plus trace B. Yeah, trace A plus trace B, where A and B are square matrices. Then we can write it as trace of C star A plus trace of C star B. And by definition, this is a c just look at the definition and this is b c so first linear property is satisfied for the given inner product okay first property is satisfied next we are going yes please explain a starting uh, once again sir because we have network issue in a starting sir. i i have defined a i have first of all i have defined a conjugate transpose of a given matrix that conjugate transpose have been actually defined for any matrix of uh, for a matrix of any order so remember that when the i defined conjugate transpose i considered any matrix because the order here is the number of row is m and number of column is n Conjugate transpose by an example, it implies that if we have a matrix like this, okay, then we have to consider the complex conjugation of each element. And then after taking the complex conjugation, we will take the transpose of the matrix. So you see here to find out the complex conjug uh, uh, conjugate transpose of the Y matrix, I have taken the complex conjugation of each of these elements by putting bar overhead. And since zero are the real numbers, so it can be considered as, as you can consider this to be zero plus uh, I zero also, whatever zero bar will be same as zero. And therefore uh, I'm writing for zero bar, I'm writing zero, zero and minus I is getting changed to plus I, but that plus I is not coming, will not put will not put plus i over here in this position because we are taking the transpose of the element so that plus i is being put over here and the complex con uh, conjugation for this i is uh, plus i is minus i so it is taking that position okay so rows become column and column becomes row after taking the transpose and thus we get the same we, we get back the same matrix capital y so it is a special type of matrix where the adjoint of the matrix is the matrix itself Okay, these are a typical matrix, which will be whose name will be in, introduced later on. But there are some other matrices, say capital A, where if I consider the matrix in the following manner, and if I find the complex conjugation of the mat, uh, 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 conjugate transpose of this matrix, that may not be equal to the given matrix at all. In both in both the cases, I have considered the square matrix, but it is not like that. It will always go, it is going to happen for square matrices only. It can happen for uh, that uh, rectangular matrix also. So for example, quickly speaking, if I consider a matrix of this type, 2, i, 3, 0, 1, minus i, so its conjugate transpose would, would be 
टू माइनस आई थ्री जीरो वन आई ओके सो दिस प्रोसेस इज एक्चुअली एप्लीकेबल टू एनी मैट्रिक्स ऑफ एनी ऑर्डर नाउ हियर आई एम डिफाइनिंग ए टाइप ऑफ इनर प्रोडक्ट इज ए स्पेशल टाइप ऑफ इनर प्रोडक्ट विच कैन बी डिफाइंड इन द फॉलोइंग मैनर सपोज वी हैव टू कॉलम फैक्टर्स कॉलम मैट्रिक कैपिटल एक्स एंड कैपिटल वाई एज गिवेन बिलो now if i by inner product of these two column matrices what i actually mean is the following we consider the conjugate transpose of y matrix and we multiply that inner product is defined this is the definition of inner product so we consider the conjugate transpose of this matrix and we multiply that matrix from the right hand side by capital x whose result is zero the conjugate transpose of this column matrix 0 1 would be the row matrix 0 1 And which should be a number. Now, keeping this in this rule in mind, we have considered a vector space of all matrices of order n defined over a field capital F. On this particular vector space, we have defined a, another inner product, which is given as follows. We consider two matrices A and B, which are square matrices, and then we are taking the product of the conjugate transpose of the second matrix. Um, with the first matrix capital a and after that we are taking the trace of that so this is my inner product that i am going i am defining on the vector space capital v now we want to say we want to check that whether under this inner product v is an inner product space or not so to check it we need to set is we need to show that all the four properties that we, that have been discussed in my previous class all these properties are satisfied the first property is the linearity property so we consider three matrices a b c belonging to this vector space now a plus b the inner product of a plus b with c gives you c trace of c star a plus b because you see that y changes its position we take y star first of all and then we multiply it by x so therefore we are taking c star first and then we are multiplying c star from the right hand side by a plus b now sister is getting all of these matrices are square matrices so we can multiply the square matrices we can multiply the, them to with one another so we get sister a plus sister b so this multiplication is possible because the matrices order are same now trace has this property if we have two square matrices a and b so trace of a plus b equal to trace a plus trace b so we get trace of sister a plus trace of sister b and by definition yes, once again trace of sister a is ac and trace of sister b is bc and thus property a is satisfied now yes. the second property is we are taking scalar c belonging to the field f and a b b2 square matrices belonging to the vector space capital v then <clears throat> the inner product of ca with b by definition this would be trace of b star ca okay now c is a scalar quantity so it can come outside so we can write it as trace of b star c a like this we can write it associativity the if a scalar multiply a matrix so that scalar can be taken outside we all know that and then once again we can write it as trace of c into b star a and then this trace trace is another property which which goes like this if c is any constant which multiplies which is which which gets multiplied with the matrix square matrix a then we can take the constant outside outside so we get c into trace of a so we can take the c outside and we get trace of b star a and thus we get c into the inner product a b so this second property is also satisfied let's go to the next property that is the complex conjugation property here you have to be a little bit careful and you have to be comfortable with the um, representation of matrices by its elements okay so we take two matrices a and b 
take a comma b b2 matrices of order n b2 matrices with the element of v now we are taking the inner product of these two matrices and their complex conjugation which is defined uh, given by bar that means first of all here i'm going to put the definition trace of b star a i'm putting a bar over here now what does this mean this means that i am actually multiplying over the in this index i and k two index have been two indices have been chosen because of two matrices there are two matrices present and the trace means element of this form b star a of the ith cell i i cell will only be considered okay so actually actually in this case k will not be there okay so uh, after you multiply we get um, the element at i i cell okay so b star a 1 1 cell b star a 2 2 cell b star a 3 3 cell all this type of elements present in b star a in the diagonal will be taken into consideration and they will they, their sum will be taken so we get this now we take the summation and this becomes carefully observe what i write <clears throat> b star i k a k i why is it so because uh, two two elements can be multiplied two elements can be multiplied only if uh, number of columns in the first matrix is equal to the number of uh, rows in the second matrix so here since i am considering the index k the index k has come into picture so i have to write i have to bring the summation k over here so this is the meaning of that okay this is how we actually multiply the two matrices number of columns in the first matrix is equal to the number of rows in the second matrix after this what we do we write it as b i k star bar and that would become a k i bar if you take any matrix and if you try to check these things uh, by expanding it you will see that this particular same thing will happen over there okay remember that remember that if we have a if we have a matrix uh, like this b i k this element whose uh, conjugate transpose has been taken and then again we consider the conjugation of the complex conjugation of this element it actually means it actually means that when we take the conjugate transpose what happens i changes to row changes to column and column changes to row so i becomes k and k becomes i with a bar sign over overhead just look at this if you remember this what happens in conjugation i becomes j and j becomes i and with a bar sign overhead here a i j whenever i write a star it is a matrix but whenever i write a j i like this these are when I put the indices, this, these are actually representing the elements. So elements are getting this kind of shape over here. So by keeping this in mind, we are changing i k into k i, putting a bar sign overhead. And on this, another bar will be there because of that. That bar is coming. B star i k, I'm writing over here for clarity. B b i k star is actually your b k i bar okay and of, on this particular element another bar will come therefore we get b k i bar bar and here i will get a k i bar only con con complex conjugation of this particular element 
then I'm writing here. This implies I K B K I bar bar will nothing but be equal to B K I and A K I bar this would be equal to A I K star. Two bars have been taken. So it will not change. B K I bar complex conjugation of something. Again, you are taking the again, you are taking its complex conjugation. So the matrix will not change. The form of the matrix will not change. It would be B K I and A K I bar only once the complex conjugation is taking taking place. So it will be it will become again K will be changed to I and I will be changed to K and it will become A I K star. Okay. And then you can write these elements can be always written in the you can commute them because they can be multiplied with one another and this is nothing but this is nothing but summation over i s star b i i and that is trace of a star b and that is equal to the inner product b a the operations that have been written over here is this operation is actually happens this is the way by which in shorter form the matrix operations are written okay you have to be very comfortable with this particular operation Otherwise, you have to consider all the uh, explicitly you have to write all the elements and then uh, you have to show individually that yeah, this is happening, that is happening. So it will, it will be clumsy and it will just kill the pages. So this is the compact way of representing the matrix products and etc. related to the matrices. So we get AB bar complex conjugation of the inner product AB is equal to the inner product BA. Lastly, property. Yes. Excuse me. Sir. Yes. Sir. Uh, do we need to uh, follow this summation or rule to solve the problem, or can we use like I have done using the tra uh, keeping it as trace? So uh, shall I say how I did it and uh, got the answer? I didn't do in this method. No, actually, uh, see, uh, for the. Uh, the type of examination that will be sitting uh, here, uh, it's online examination. So obviously this type of uh, thing you need not do, but if it is a matter, if it is a case of offline examination and if you are asked to show it, uh, this uh, yeah. uh, thing, this property is uh, property, then you have to show it the way I am showing it. I know what you are okay, saying. So you are, you so have applied the direct properties of the traces. Uh, no. Of the traces, yes, sir. I have applied the property of the traces. That means that means you have you have already assumed that this happens. That is known to you. All this place, all this. Yes, sir. I have done it. What I have done is, uh, I have um, from the second step uh, that trace of a B star, this star a, a whole mm. conjugate. Mm. Yes, sir. I have done it as a trace of. Uh, I have converted B star to B conjugate transpose. I have written B conjugate. Okay, transpose so a, I'm writing. And I'm writing. A whole conjugate. Wait, you are you have done it in this manner. Trace of, then you have written B star. B conjugate transpose. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, sir, not star. I have written B conjugate transpose A whole conjugate. B conjugate transpose A whole conjugate. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, this sir. one. And then according to the property of, uh, no, I have, yes, sir, not transpose. It will be whole conjugate. It isn't transpose. Okay. It will be whole conjugate. Hmm. I've taken the property of uh, um, uh, the traces, the trace of A conjugate. Uh, a transpose is the trace of A. So similarly, I have done trace of A transpose B conjugate, whole transpose conjugate. A, a transpose, transpose B. B conjugate. Hmm. B conjugate. Hmm. And whole transpose conjugate. Transpose and then conjugate. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. So it's coming to 
transpose of a uh, a uh, tra tra trace of a transpose is equal to trace of a similarly i have mm. done trace of this is coming to trace of a transpose b conjugate whole conjugate trace of a transpose a tra b conjugate, b conjugate. Yeah. Whole conjugate. Whole conjugate. Yeah, whole yes. conjugate. Whole conjugate. Yes, and then this, this is this is coming to trace of a star b. This is hmm. coming to uh, trace of a star b. So hmm. from this, I'm getting as uh, the inner uh, product as b comma a. Yes, inner product of b comma a. B comma a. So is this a uh, method right? And and here in this particular case, you you have uh, considered this property trace of uh, a is equal to a trace of a transpose. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. This property you have used over here. Yes, sir. And um, also, you have used some other property, I think, about the conjugation. Uh, here in this case, AT transpose. AT transpose is equal to A star transpose T. Somewhere in your example, this property has been used, I think. No, so I haven't used this property. You, so how did you write this this thing? How did you get at a star only? Where this transpose goes? From this step to that step, how it is coming? Uh, I got this step um, from um, transpose of at. You say trace of at b star. Trace of at b star, whole transpose whole uh, star. Then how you are getting this step from this step? This then part. I have done another step. Uh, so, uh, then I have another uh, done another step of a trans a transpose uh, a conjugate transpose mm -hmm. b. I have written trace of a conjugate transpose b. Okay, whatever uh, I uh, not getting actually since your uh, the way you have done it, it's not in front of me. So probably I'm missing some parts. Yes, sir, so you just problem. click a picture yes. of that and later you send me to, yes. through WhatsApp. I will check it later. But okay, uh, sir, that would be what you are asking is that if you apply the properties, uh, can we do without expanding it in the way I have expanded? Can I do yes, it sir, in the way okay. using the property? The answer is yes, you can. But for each step, you have to mention carefully uh, which property, part which particular property you have used. If you want to okay. do it by property, then you have to mention each of the properties that has been used over here. Okay. Okay, sir. I'm yeah. sending you the solved problem uh, in WhatsApp later. Okay, sir. Uh, later, but before sending, you what you do, you make it a fresh, and besides yes, every sir. step, you write which property you have used. Property I'm using. Okay. Yeah, sir, with diff with different color. So this step with different color, this property has been used. This step, then with different color, this property has been used. So it will be easy for me to uh, go through your uh, this part of your proof, and I'll check. Uh, the, I'll be able to uh, clarify your doubts regarding that. But yeah, this can be done. Only requirement is that you have to mention each and every property. Otherwise, you have to expand it. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Now for. For a matrix capital A belonging to M N cross N F, this becomes trace of A star A and like my previous rule, I can again write it as A star A I I similar manner in a similar manner we can write it as summation over ik a star ik and a k i okay same process will be applied over here and that would be summation over i summation over k a k i bar a k i and that would be equal to summation over i, summation over k, mod of a k i whole square. Because you know x, uh, 
x bar into x becomes mod x square. So that thing has been used over here. X is any vector. So we get from this, we get this. So inner product of A with itself gives me this uh, result. And now if A is not, is not equal to zero matrix, this is zero matrix, zero N cross N, then A, K, I, these elements will not be equal to zero for some K and I, and therefore the inner product